In this lesson, we're going to begin to discuss paragraph formatting. If you'd like to follow along, go into your file menu to open, and in the sample files folder, scroll down to 0701-0702 paragraph panel, and just click open. We're going to be talking about alignment in paragraphs. Why don't we start just by going to our zoom tool. You can hit your Z key to get there very quickly and just click and drag across the width of that left page of the spread. And now I'm going to go to my type tool and just click in this subhead. And if you look in the paragraph panel, you'll see all of the alignment features are right across the top. A lot of these will look very familiar to you if you use a word processing program or any other layout application. By default, all of the text is aligned to the left. I'm going to click in the next paragraph and you can see that is aligned to the left. The reason I can just click anywhere in a paragraph to apply paragraph formatting is with an insert point anywhere in a paragraph. If I were to apply paragraph formatting, it's going to apply to the entire paragraph. It's paragraph wide. A line left is also called flush left, rag right. Why don't we click in that subhead again? And we're going to center the subhead by clicking on the next alignment button, align center. The next alignment is called align right. Let me click on that. When would I ever do that? Well, let me go back to align center and I'm going to scroll down the page a bit. And you can see that there's a caption here about the photograph towards the right. In order to make it perfectly clear that this caption is talking about the photograph to its right, you're best off using a line right. That way, all of the lines of type are going towards that picture that it's the caption for. Why don't I go back to a line left? And I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to click in that first body text paragraph underneath my centered subhead. And I'm going to apply justify with last line a line left. And you can see when the type is justified, it's adding space between the words to make all of the lines except for the last one come out to the full measure of the column. This is the most common kind of justify. It's used almost all the time when type is justified. You'll see it a lot in magazines, newspapers, books, newsletters, and it gives a very clean, slightly more formal look than a line left, rag right. There are two other kinds of justify that are almost exactly the same, except for the last line. Let me click on justify with last line align center. This might be used in a symmetrical kind of layout where everything is centered. You have a centered headline, a centered picture, and you may want to center your body copy as well. But if you're using justify, you would use justify with last line centered to go with the rest of that symmetrical centered look of your layout. But what about this next one? Justify with last line align right. Well, when would I ever use that? Why don't we scroll down the page again and go to this caption and get an insert point there. And I'm going to use justify with last line align right. Like the other align right that isn't justified, if I had a caption that was to the left of a picture, and I wanted to make it perfectly clear that this caption is for this picture, I want to align all of the lines of the text towards the picture. If I have a caption that I want to justify, and I run into the situation where the caption is to the left of the picture, I'm going to use justify with last line align right, so all the lines are going towards that picture. Let me select this line. I'm just going to click in the paragraph that says a single word. And I'm going to use justify all lines. And when I click on it, you can see that it's taking that entire paragraph, that one line paragraph, and it's forcing it to come out to the full width 
of the column. Well, let's take this a step further. What would happen if I got an insert point before the word word and I hit a return or an enter? Now you can see that entire word, including the period, is forced to go out to the full measure of the column. So it's adding space between the individual characters. This is a feature that is not used all that much, but when you need it, it's really a nice feature. Let's say I had a tagline underneath a logo, and I wanted the tagline to be equal to the width of the logo. If I make my text frame the same width as the logo and use force justify or justify all lines, it will make that tagline the same exact width as the logo. So it does have some uses. Why don't we scroll down the page towards the bottom and then scroll over to the right page. Watch what happens if I get an insert point in my legal line down the bottom and I use justify all lines. And you can see that it's adding an equal amount of space between each one of the words to spread it out across the full measure of my text frame. Well, when would I ever want to do this? Well, let me select one of these spaces. And I'm going to go under my type menu and go to white space, flush space, all the way down the bottom. And you can see what it's doing. It's actually forcing all of the space from justify all lines into that one flush space. Why don't I turn on my invisible characters by going to the view pop-up hidden characters and you can see flush space does have a special character let me zoom in a lot closer and now go back to my type tool and just click well why would i ever want to do this let me just zoom out here i'm hitting command hyphen or control hyphen and I'm just going to keep going until I kind of fit the width into my screen. A lot of times when you have legal text, people like to divide it up into sections going all the way across the frame. Let me select this flush space and I'm going to copy it. Command C, Control C, and then I'm going to find that other space that's between All Rights Reserved and InDesign CS6. I'm going to paste another flush space between those two sections. And you can see what's happening. It's dividing up the legal line into three separate sections with an equal amount of space between those sections of the legal text. Well, couldn't I do this with tabs? And the answer is yes, I could. But this is far more adjustable. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to my selection tool. And I'm just going to click and start dragging inward. And you can see it's readjusting the flush spaces to take up all the additional space between the three sections of my legal line. If I was using tabs, I would have to redo the tabs to make this happen. Let me click and drag this back out. And you can see that it does readjust. Let's fit our entire spread in the window. It's view, fit, spread, in window. And I wanted to talk about these two last alignment features across the top over here, align toward spine and align away from spine. I'm going to click on this particular frame. And because it's only one paragraph, if I select the frame, I can actually change the paragraph formatting without selecting any text at all. I want you to pay close attention to the alignment of all the text within this frame. Right now, it's aligned towards the spine. Basically, what that means is it's aligning it to this imaginary line going down the center of my spread, which is actually the fold. Now, the type is aligned towards that spine, and that's what the formatting is, aligned towards spine. Watch what happens if I click and drag that frame to the other side. The text is still aligned towards the spine. Over here, it was actually aligned towards the right. Here, it's aligned towards the left because the spine on this page is to the left of that text. If I move it back on this page, the spine is to the right of that text. This 
A line away from spine is exactly the opposite. It's aligning all of the text flush away from the spine. If I drag towards the other page, it's doing just the opposite. We're going to continue discussing paragraph formatting in the next lesson.